Oh, I feel a peculiar yearning for another video in Noodle's complete Path of Exile lore series. This video is a theory on Tsuni and his role. Let's begin. Tsuni is one of the strangest characters in Path of Exile. He is the sole male Marrakath NPC in Highgate. You can spot men working in the background, but none of them have positions of any power. The Marrakath are a matriarchal society, but Tasuni is revered and possibly feared by his Akara for his unique power. And that power is communication with the beast and nightmare. So why does that matter? Because the only other people in history who have had direct communication with the beast that we know of are Doriani and Malachi, the two men who caused the cataclysms of their time. Their communication with the beast, along with their thaumaturgical powers, led them down a path to entering the beast, which resulted in devastating apocalyptic events. While one might argue that Tasuni isn't known as a powerful thaumaturgist or doesn't seem openly power-hungry, I'd argue that Tasuni's prophetic abilities indicate he is a powerful thaumaturgist, and that both Doriani and Malachi were influenced and compelled by the Nightmare to their decision to enter the Beast. Let's go back. Doriani and Malachi both claimed that the Beast spoke to them in their dreams. On the Blood of Corruption, Doriani said, In my dream, a voice spoke to me. It said, My reach knows no bounds. All that is pure is destined to rot. All that lives is destined to serve. Malachi said that after he touched a virtue gem for the first time, the dreams began. I have not been without them since, nor would I be. From whence do these precepts hail? The beast. Doriani of the Val knew the truth. Soon now, so shall I. We don't know much about these men before they were contacted by the beast and nightmare but we do know that the Nightmare inspired their thaumaturgy and persuaded them both to enter the Beast. When we meet Tasuni in Act 4, he can tell us much about the Beast inside the mountain. His knowledge is not simply historical. He says he hears the black hearts that thunder within the mountain deep. He can hear the Beast and the other spirits trapped in its Nightmare. And similar to Malachi's comments on Doriani, he says, Yet one man knew the beast's true name, understood its impenetrable nature, Malachi. On the surface, Tasuni is a simple blind prophet, brother of Kira, the best warrior of the Highgate Marraketh. He is not a violent man, he does not have connections to powerful leaders, and his knowledge seems to help us defeat Malachi and subdue the nightmare. But I believe there are key similarities between Tasuni and Malachi that have made me suspicious of Tasuni. I'll go over my theory point by point to break it down. Point 1. Tasuni was left in the desert to die as a baby, but did not die. The Marakath have a tradition that any child born disfigured or warped is left in the Vastiri Desert, on a moonlit plain for the gods to adopt. Tasuni was the only child in the history of this Akara, maybe ever, to survive this. Tasuni was born blind, but was seen as warped beyond just being blind. Oyun says that Tasuni was corrupted from birth, and that he is a man caught between two worlds, our world of light and the beast's world of darkness. Usually, a child surviving such an act would be seen as divine intervention, but we know that the gods did not rise until the beast was brought to the brink of death by us, when Tasuni is an adult. So, either Tasuni was a very durable baby, which could be true if he's a naturally gifted thaumaturgist, or some other kind of divine intervention took place, and that could only be from the beast. Kira, his sister, has no connection to the beast or understanding of the nightmare. Neither does anyone else in the Akara. Genetics or proximity to the beast doesn't seem to be a factor here. If the beast chose Tasuni, why would that be? For what purpose? Point 2. Tasuni can communicate with the beast. 
beyond the fact that he can hear spirits inside the mountain and have prophetic visions, Tosuni seems to actually understand the beast's intentions. If you play as Sion, Tosuni says that few understand the full enormity of the nightmare, and challenges the Sion to look him in the eye and tell me the beast can be defeated. The irony being that Tosuni is blind. And he's not wrong. Even though we kill Malachi and severely reduce the beast's nightmare, allowing the gods to return, we eventually restore the beast with Sin's guidance. He sees the nightmare's puppetry of Doresso's soul as gracious. Nightmare is not without sophistication. In life, Doresso was tortured by frustration and shame. In death, Nightmare has erased his past and forged a dream world in which Doresso would remain contented and loved. What if Nightmare could do that for all of us? Would we really wish to destroy it then? This sentiment goes beyond reasoning the Nightmare's intentions. He is saying that the Nightmare helps people, that its influence is a gift. He says that Kelm was delusional and then adds, the power of Nightmare to manipulate the soul never ceases to impress me. He claims we might end up like Kelm if we continue on our path to destroy the beast, which almost seems a threat. When we release Doresso's spirit, he snidely remarks that we freed him from eternal love and triumph. With Kalm, he asks, Nightmare gave Kalm everything he ever dreamed of. How did it feel to make that dream die? And even more condemning, he says that the beast yearns for transformation like a worm in a cocoon that dreams of wings and freedom, a transformation that only the beast can excite. Who else has helped the beast transform? Malachi. And Tasuni knows that the beast wants that transformation. Evidence that Tasuni knows the beast compels those it communicates with to engage with it, enter it, and help it transform so it can unleash its nightmare. We'll come back to this, but for the next point, point three, Tasuni reveres Malachi. Almost every character we come in contact with condemns Malachi's actions and his instigation of the Cataclysm. Even Diala, who had loved him for almost 300 years, comes to see Malachi as manipulative and dangerous. The only characters who respect Malachi are Dominus and Piety, both of whom want to become like Malachi, but neither of whom have any connection with the beast themselves. They tried to emanate Malachi and his students, to walk in their footsteps, and simply became puppets of the nightmare, monstrous versions of themselves lacking agency, controlled by Malachi from inside the beast. When Piety dies, Malachi and the nightmare reach out to her and show her greatness beyond her imagining. But Piety is not communicating directly with the beast, like Tasuni or Malachi. Malachi is able to reach Piety only once she is dead. Tasuni lives and still communicates with the beast. And he does not fear Malachi. Tasuni says that Malachi is what every ghast aspires to be. The hands and eyes, the voice and mind of the beast himself. I see him in my dreams. Again, confirming that this communication comes from dreams, just like Doriani or Malachi forming his designs, crafting his tools, refining the chaos of Nightmare into a vision. A vision that neither you or I belong to, unless, of course, we choose to accept the dark embrace. Should he succeed, he will awaken the beast. What then? The beast is not death. Life will go on. A life like nothing we have seen before. Tasuni claims he can see and feel the darkness, the cataclysm was no accident. Its images are far too rich with intention, far too steeped in satisfaction. Malachi's satisfaction. Malachi devastated my people, destroyed the eternal empire for one reason, to put himself right where he is now, within the black heart of the beast. On the surface, it might seem like Tasuni condemns what Malachi did, but really he is just stating facts. I personally read hints of envy in Tasuni's words. 
that Tasuni sees what Malachi has done as satisfying and that he desires to see Malachi's vision achieved. He even admires Malachi's apprentices, Chevron, Malagaro, and Doedre, as the three finest forgers of corruption in the Empire, and that he agrees with Malachi that it would have been such a waste to let them languish in death. He tells us that Deshret's spirit has survived in the mines for so long without being corrupted because she is unimaginative. While we might see that as a strength of character, being able to resist the influence of the nightmare, while each of Malachi's three students takes turns trying to corrupt and break her, Tasuni calls the students ingenious, true artists. Point four, Tasuni doesn't want the beast to be destroyed. Though Tasuni seems to aid us with knowledge to destroy the beast, he hints that he longs to see the beast's vision executed through Malachi. If you destroy the beast as a ranger, Tasuni chides you, for a lover of nature, Ranger, you surely know how to destroy it. Yes, you can argue that the beast was beyond nature, unnatural to its blackened core. I won't believe you, though. He says the beast is just misunderstood, and sarcastically thanks you for bringing nature back to something we can know and be comfortable with. But his final thoughts reveal his true feelings. The world the beast would have created would have been far too interesting. And by Act 9, Tasuni still has a connection to the beast, as we have not completely destroyed it. He says the nightmares are but whispers now, but they still give him prophecy. The old gods are returned, and so are we. Interestingly, when we return, Tasuni is a contender for the new Sekima of the Akara at Highgate. He wants to bring change to the Marraketh, to break them out of their tradition and bring progress. While this seems superficially innocuous, like many things, there is a dark undertone to his desire. Point 5. Tasuni has prophetic abilities. If he can see us returning, he likely knew Oyun's fate at the hands of his own sister, Kira. Tasuni claims innocence in this whole situation, where Kira has kidnapped the Sekima, Oyun, to sacrifice to Garukan. While I believe he did not assist Kira in taking Oyun, there is no way he was not aware of what was happening. In Act 4, Tasuni says of Oyun's leadership, The Marraketh are stranded in the sandstorm of reflection and regret. We look to our Sekima to lead us out, yet the sandstorm is all she knows. She needs me, her eyes and ears in the darkness, but she will never comprehend my gifts. Oyun agrees that Tasuni's gifts are helpful because you must know your enemy to combat it. But what progress would Tasuni hope to achieve as leader of the Marraketh tribe? It's not as if there is some progressive civilization nearby they can integrate with. Everywhere on Rayclast is devastated still by the effects of the Cataclysm, and now again by the returning of the Old Gods. Tasuni could simply refer to communicating with and learning from the people of Oriath with their technology and thaumaturgy. But the Marraketh are not against thaumaturgy, and Tasuni hasn't shown particular proclivity towards anything other than the nightmare. When we retrieve the Sekima feather from Oyun's body, we make a choice. Give the feather to Irasha or Tasuni to, to become the leader of the Highgate Marraketh. If you give the feather to Irasha, she grieves for Oyun, but accepts responsibility. Tasuni laments that fate shan't be content with just the taking of my eyes. It is pernicious enough to steal my vision from me as well. But he also says that time is on his side, and nobody remains Sekima for long. This statement echoes his thoughts on the consequences of the nightmare Malachi was crafting being fully achieved. Life will go on. Tasuni claims he wanted to bring Highgate to a brighter, better future. But what happens when you give the feather to Tasuni suggests otherwise. Tasuni shows no remorse for the passing of Oyun and Kira. He says, There is no sense in shedding a tear for those who would stand in the way of progress. That it is the best thing either could have done for their people, and Arasha will have to accept him and his decisions as the new Sekima. Which is true. 
Irasha mourns Oyun, calls us foolish, and says we've brought her grief. She says it's clear to Sunni desires but one wish, to rise up as a god. Even Irasha can see that Tasuni desires more power than simply ruling over Highgate. She thinks he wants to become a god, like the old gods risen. But I believe he wants to become the nightmare, like Malachi, especially now that the beast is revived, but Malachi is dead. Point six, Tasuni can see Sin. The only other NPC who can see Sin who is not another god like Innocence, is Yina. Yina has spirit on her side, an entity that recognizes Sin, maybe a god itself, and tells Yina about Sin. She does not see Sin herself. No one else on our journey acknowledges Sin's existence, because they cannot see or sense him. When we talk to Tasuni in Act 9, he says he can sense Sin that Sin has a different energy to the other gods in his dreams, more empathetic to the plight which humanity suffers. That's also what Sin tells us, that he is a god trying to protect humanity from the whims and wars of other gods. And that's also Sin's reasoning for having created the beast, this source of all thaumaturgy, that Sin was protecting mankind. Tasuni has the capacity to see and understand Sin. There's a few implications to this. Tasuni must have some thaumaturgical or divine power that allows him to sense gods. Beyond this, he seems to understand Sin's intentions, which is either related to this prophetic ability or is because Tasuni has communication with the beast, who would obviously see Sin in a favorable light. Sin is the beast's creator, after all. When Tasuni says, it seems, Lord Sin, as if you are on our side, he seems to be referring to the side of mankind, but he could also be referring to the beast's side. Point seven, Tasuni's reaction to the beast's return. While Tasuni was aware we had not completely destroyed the beast, his reaction to our resurrecting of the beast using the souls of Chevron, Malagaro, and Doedre is very telling, and maybe the most compelling evidence that Tasuni might walk in the footsteps of Malachi. He can sense the beast's return and knows of our own purpose for this return. A weapon has been discovered, perhaps, to turn the tide of bloodshed brought on by these sickening gods. We do indeed resurrect the beast to use its power, in tandem with divine powers of sin and innocence, to defeat Kitava. But Tasuni continues, Tell me, what did you find? No, I mustn't inquire, for fear of losing my mind as well as my eyes. Oh, I am struck by a peculiar yearning exile. It is as if I am a man stood on the precipice of a cliff, with an insatiable longing for the ground. With Malachi's soul out of the beast, and the beast now returned, suddenly Tasuni has an intense, maddening longing to know what is inside the beast. He feels a yearning and seems to be struggling with that desire. He continues, Leave me before the frenzied voices inside my head devour my body and soul. Both Doriani and Malachi wrote that they heard voices in their dreams, compelling their actions. Malachi even said that he heard them every night in his dreams, driving him. Perhaps the one thing stopping Tasuni was that Malachi still remained in the beast, so the beast and nightmare did not need him. While we can't know for sure what Tasuni's yearning is, this is the first instance of Tasuni losing his calm. Instead of being factual, dismissive, and cool, he is frenzied, insatiable. So, Tasuni is the only living person who, without the help of instruments or spirits, can commune with the beast and see the gods. He mocks our actions against the beast, says the world of Nightmare would be interesting, calls Malachi and his apprentices artists, and is uncharacteristically excited by the beast's return. He only survived as a baby left in the desert from some divine or corrupt intervention at birth and seeks the title of Sekima of Hezekara to bring the Meriketh of Highgate to progress. 
but there are a few questions to address. Malachi and Doriani were both incredible thaumaturgists and inventors of their time. What has Tasuni accomplished? While Tasuni isn't an inventor, he also hasn't had opportunities these two have had. I wouldn't say Tasuni's communion with the beast is imminent, he may be closer to the beginning of the path parallel to these two. But he clearly has a thaumaturgical gift in his prophecy and ability to see the gods. While he hasn't made elaborate inventions like Malachi's reverie or rapture device, we also don't know what exactly Doriani's thaumaturgical powers were like. Also, Malachi and Doriani had extremely powerful backers. Doriani was supported by Adziri, the most powerful Vol queen of her time, and Malachi was supported by Chittis, the Emperor of the Eternals. They both needed this powerful backing to reach their goals. Maybe Doriani wasn't an inventor, but had some other extreme thaumaturgical power. Maybe Tasuni's is his sight, ironically enough. Perhaps Tasuni wants to be Sekima to find someone to invest in his own pursuits. Which leads to, why does Tasuni want to be leader of the Mariketh? Tasuni claims he wants to lead this traditional tribe to a better future. He is incredibly vague in this regard. But Irasha's comments that Tasuni wants to become a god give us insight into his true intentions with power. Maybe Tasuni is unable to leave the Mariketh and would not be allowed to pursue these corrupt dreams if he was not the leader. He does remark that Irasha may spit and curse, yet her duty shall overcome her distaste if he becomes the Sekima. Tasuni knows that, as a leader, he can dictate their actions and beliefs. Maybe he will open Highgate to more outsiders, something Oyun had only done recently. The Highgate Mariketh were basically a secret unknown to the surrounding peoples. Maybe Tasuni wants to bring thaumaturgical instruments and knowledge into Highgate from places like Oriath and people like Valenta, who were also interested in communicating with the beast. Obviously, she's dead now, but the point still stands. We can't know what Tasuni wants to lead for. But if he was not free to leave or pursue thaumaturgy to his desired extent as a member of the tribe, maybe he wants to lead simply for the freedom to do as he pleases. What does Valenta hear through the miasmeter? How is that different to Tasuni's powers? In Act 5, we retrieve Valenta's miasmeter. It's a tool created to hear the corrupted whispers from the beast. Valenta tells us that she heard the beast die at our hands, heard its screams. The key difference between Valenta and Tasuni is that Valenta needed this tool to hear the beast, therefore she's more so eavesdropping than communicating. Valenta heard the beast and heard whispers before that, but Tasuni understood how Kalm, Duresso, and Deshret felt trapped in the nightmare with the beast. He knew Malachi was inside the beast, controlling this nightmare. He recognized that only Malachi truly understood the beast, just as Malachi recognized only Doriani before him had. He can hear all of this without any tool's assistance. And his deeper understanding of the beast's intentions and actions, either being able to interpret more clearly or being directly communicated to, is quite different than simply eavesdropping. Many thaumaturgical tools have been created that utilize the nightmare, but Tasuni is able to gather this information on his own, from his own innate abilities. Tasuni is a contentious figure, no doubt. He feels no remorse for the death of his Sekima and his sister. He sympathizes with the nightmare's vision, he chides us on freeing Kalm and Duresso. He undermines Deshret's strength while praising the artistry of her tormentors. At the very least, he is darkly interested in the power of Nightmare. But I believe that hints have been laid to his destiny. The two men who entered the beast and caused cataclysms before him followed similar paths. They were gifted in thaumaturgy, they received visions and messages from the beast in their dreams. They were compelled, perhaps they yearned, to discover more about the beast and eventually enter it. 
They were willing to let many die and suffer while they pursued this quest. By the end of Act 9, Tasuni is experiencing a yearning to know more of the beast and what's inside. As he stands on the precipice of this cliff, will he heed the call of the beast? Or will he remain in the other half of his world, as Oyun put it, in the light amongst mankind? Thank you so much for watching, it's your boy Noodle. If you like these theory videos, let me know in the comments. Thanks as always to my patrons. This couldn't happen without your continued support. And even if you find yourself on the precipice of a cliff, try not to heed the voices. Remain in the light and stay sane, exile. <laughs>